couple of things about research. Let us clear up some misconceptions. First of all, you cannot make research say anything that you want it to say. You can misinterpret research or overinterpret the data or conduct a study or look at only specific data to get a result that you want, but you cannot make research say anything that you want to. So let us clarify, research is not research unless and until it has been subjected to peer review and or ideally published in an academic journal and subjected to the views of people in the field who can then respond and the cycle of research continues. Simply doing a study is not research. Simply collecting data is not research. And this distinction is often not made by for-profit entities that want to claim their programs, for-profit programs, are research-based. For example, I could say that research shows the Andy Johnson method of teaching literacy is highly effective. And there I'm citing the research. Or this method is more effective than traditional methods, whatever traditional methods are. I guess I would identify that. Or it's the most effective method to use in helping pre-service teachers teach reading. Or that it shows it has a significant impact on teachers' ability to teach reading. And here I would be defining the question. I would be defining what is measured effectiveness? Am I doing test results, survey results, MTLE, teacher tests? What am I doing to measure? How am I collecting the data? What data am I collecting? And here I'm published, see, the effectiveness of the Andy Johnson method published by the Andy Johnson Institute of Effective Literacy Instruction. This is what often happens not as blatantly as I have presented here, but this is what often happens. Research is not research unless and until it has been subjected to blind peer review. I have not found any research to support any of these programs. Lots of studies, lots of data collected, but I have not found any research. If you come across, please send it unto me, and I'll be happy to change my mind on these. But scientifically based reading research, have not found any data to support that yet. Yet, lots of money is spent, misspent, wasted on these every year because it says research based or a misunderstanding of what scientifically based reading research is. Research never proves anything once and for all. It addresses a specific research question based on a hypothesis. It supports or rejects a null hypothesis. And then the data rejects or supports this null hypothesis and creates a data dot. And data dots are used to create this dot to dot picture, which we call a theory. And theories are used to help us understand, but also to support specific practices and pedagogical strategies. Now, if you come to understand reading and reading research only, and I say only, to the very narrow people of experimental research, your view will be extremely limited. Yet this often happens in certain fields. There's a variety of research methods. The method should always be determined by the question. Is there a gold standard? Well, actually not. If you come to understand there's basic research, which helps you understand. There's applied research, which helps you understand in action. How is this happening in the real world? There's theory, there's pedagogy. All of these support and reinforce each other. Theoretical and applied research are of equal importance in understanding or coming to understand how, what, when we teach, why we teach. And again, if you use only experimental research, experimental research is necessary but far from sufficient in and of itself. Can anything be said to be truly scientific that ignores a wealth of data? If you're ignoring qualitative and descriptive studies because someone has convinced you that there is a gold standard, you are ignoring a wealth of data. As well, if you look at only experimental research, 
from the field of reading, you, uh, uh, you are ignoring research from a variety of other fields, which helps us create an understanding of reading and the reading process. When research-based claims are made, you should always ask to look at the specific research. Send me the citation so I can see that in and of itself. Now, I like to use handbooks of reading research published by national organizations for reading. I like the International Literacy Association or the National Council of Teachers of English. These are peer-reviewed. It's a good synthesis of all the research in the field related to specific topics. But there are a variety of good academic journals, and academic journals will give you the latest research a lot quicker than books or handbooks of reading uh, of research. Researchers in the area of literacy need to understand and have a background in literacy and the literacy process so they know what questions to ask, so they know what's relevant, so they know what others have said. As an example, John Hattie's made a lot of money on this thing called visible learning and the science of how we learn. He does meta-analyses, and this is a procedure where you put a bunch of related research, run it through this statistical procedure or this formula, and it spits out an effect size for a specific uh, strategy or pedagogy. Now, here he compares whole language to direct instruction, and this tells me right away that he knows nothing about reading and reading research. It's like comparing golf clubs to a nine iron. Whole language includes direct instruction. Direct instruction is a pedagogical strategy, not a method. Whole language teachers believe in very direct and explicit instruction. Also, when you read through this, he misinterprets and creates a cartoon version of what whole language is. Also, we know nothing about the sample size, the subjects, the participation, the teachers, and or the teaching methods. Was whole language, whatever that is, taught equally as effectively as what direct instruction is? We just don't know these things. As well, the last thing, research based on a false premise will always lead to misleading results. The false premise here, if you think reading is simply sounding out words, well, you are going to get misleading results. The correct premise is that reading is creating meaning with print. Without meaning, you're simply barking at print. You are not creating, you are not reading. All right, just some understanding of research as it relates to reading instruction.